Hey everybody, today on TFL Off-Road, we've got something different for you. Meet the 2019 John Deere X350. Now no, John Deere didn't lend me this tractor, I just bought this tractor. This is my brand new tractor that I bought for cutting my lawn and clearing the snow off my driveway, and I want to review it for you guys. So in this video, we're going to do a full walk around, we'll discuss all the features of the X350, I will show you snow blowing my driveway, and then we'll just talk through sort of the purchasing decision and why I chose to go with the 350 over some of the other models in the John Deere stable. Now it's always a great day when you get new toys so I'm excited. What are we waiting for? Let's do it. So if you're asking well why a big lawn tractor? Well this is the reason right here. This is my brand new house. Yes my family and I got out of the city, moved out to the country and that means two things. Big lawn and big driveway and you can see we actually just got a fresh dump of snow last night it's actually still snowing just a tiny bit right now but uh, yeah we definitely needed help because I wasn't gonna be out here shoveling this and then pushing a lawn more on that so uh, lawn tractor was the only way to go now let's go uh, talk over this 350 and I will show you uh, what makes it so great so what you're looking at here, the X350, this is one of the most popular lawn tractors in the entire John Deere lineup. Now this is a step above the basic 100 series lineup. There's also a 200 series model which is a bit of a tweener. But the difference is this is the first model with the 300 series that you step up into a bigger frame. Now because I'm doing a lot of snow clearing with my model, I definitely wanted that thicker frame. So those smaller tractors just weren't going to be an option for me, mainly because of the snow. If it was just grass, we probably would have been fine. So let me just show you around this beast first of all. Now like I mentioned, and as you can obviously see, it's outfitted for snow. So we got the blower up front, but the snow kit also comes with tire chains and those weights right there just to make sure that all that weight up front you're basically counterbalancing it and then the chains are just for traction this thing is just two-wheel drive with an open differential so uh, not a lot of uh, traction devices let's say now that's actually another interesting point if you do bump up to bigger models you can get a locking diff and then you can also get bigger more aggressive tires but honestly my lot here is entirely flat I have no uh, tricky terrain to contend with so I did not need any of those extra traction devices. I'll tell you what I did need though, this Kawasaki engine. And actually before I show the engine, let me show you this guys. I love this. This is a neat little feature, which I think is a big deal. There's no latches. There's no latching for your hood. There's no rubber, uh, you know, weird little pull handles, nothing like that. It literally just stays closed. You open it up. It's always ready to go. Bam. Now unlike an ATV or a snowmobile, it's not like you're flying down the trail. So obviously John Deere decided you just don't need the latch. That's one extra st or one step eliminated in getting into your engine. Now this engine bay guys, so open and easy to access everything. And there's really not a lot going on in here. The hood uh, actually houses a lot of air. So this engine right here is the what they call the iTorque. This is a Kawasaki engine and John Deere actually puts the specs right on the engine. 18 and a half horsepower at 3600 RPM. And now I know it's marked John Deere, but if we come over here, we can see right there, this is a Kawasaki engine. Now if you go for the base model, the X300, you're actually going to get a Briggs and Stratton engine, and then you actually have to pay a little bit more to get up to the 350 and get the Cowie engine. And based on everything I read, the Kawasaki engine is the one to get for longevity and even for low end power delivery. Even though the X300 technically has more power on paper, this engine is uh, a little bit preferable which is why John Deere charges the extra money for it. I've also heard that it's quieter and smoother than the Briggs and Stratton. I can't speak to that personally but uh, knowing Kawasaki myself and hearing some opinions from other people I figured it was worth it to bump up to the Cowie engine. So now let me show you what I'm talking about with ease of use guys. So first of all there's your battery. Now right down in there you can see that's your inline fuel filter. So changing the fuel filter, no big deal. Nice and exposed. Over here on this side of the engine we have 
oil filler right there and right down there is your oil filter so once again no big deal doing an oil change changing your oil filter and then right here is your oil drain so a nice easily accessible oil drain I really think they did this uh, smart under the hood here making everything easy to get to and guys this is an old school system so there's your choke cable right there that's the choke moving and then underneath it that's your throttle right there and it's just an old school cable they run right up to your hand controls here there's your throttle and there's your choke and the choke is spring loaded but more on that in a moment and here's another thing I want to show you this theme carries on throughout the whole tractor and it's really just keeping it simple stupid John Deere knows that a lot of people riding these tractors are not quote-unquote tractor people are not power sports people so they include everything on stickers really obviously and this is the maintenance schedule and guys I think this is brilliant why should I have to dig through my owner's manual why not just make it clear and obvious with a sticker what, what it's no big deal to put a sticker on here and now I can see you know oil filter change engine oil 100 hours check rear wheel bolt torques 50 hours lubricate front axle 50 hours and so on and so forth that right there makes a lot of sense to me and I think a lot more manufacturers could take note that John Deere does a great job of explaining things to you on its machines okay now let's close up the hood and we'll move back here to uh, the cockpit or the driver's seat if you want to call it that and I can show you some of the controls here now things are very straightforward especially down here with your uh, forward and reverse pedal so this is a hydrostatic transmission and that means that you don't have to worry about shifting gears you push this one for forward that one for reverse and it's honestly that simple now the top lever there that is a brake but there's really no need to use the brake. If you're moving and you take your foot off of the forward or reverse pedals, this thing is gonna come to a stop pretty quickly. The brake is mostly for using the parking brake. Now, as I showed you up here, there's your throttle, very simple. There's your choke. And this machine definitely likes its choke. You're gonna have to choke it every single time you start it. I was a little surprised at that, but uh, you know, that's just how this engine works. So the mower lift right there, when you have the snow blower on, becomes the blower lift. So if I operate this foot pedal on the left hand side, there's only one pedal, you'll see the entire blower lift up. There it is. And then if I take the pedal back off, the blower goes down to the ground. Now, if I lift the blower, pop up this switch, boom, the blower stays up off the ground and is now in a travel position and is ready to be uh, driven around without plowing snow or blowing snow. But we will drop that back down to the ground. Now there's also a nice little display here. When you fire up your key, you'll see it there. Nothing too fancy, but all the important information. Fuel gauge right in the center. Over here you got a battery gauge, engine hour counter, which comes on. Oh, you can see it there. I don't even have an hour on it yet. <laughs> 0.9. By the end of this video, I'm sure I'll crack an hour. So now, let's take a look at the seat real quick. Now they call it the airflow seat because John Deere's idea is that on a hot summer day you want air flowing through to your back. Now on a cold winter's day that's not really ideal so this is probably needless to say but you got to make sure you're totally dressed for the, uh, the occasion when you're out blowing snow. Now underneath the seat here are a couple of interesting things. First of all that's your dead man switch so if you get off the seat the tractor will shut off. You have to be sitting on it for it to run. Under here we have springs. So these are providing suspension for the driver, making it a little bit softer. But here's the cool thing about the springs. They actually have three different positions. So see, most forward, there's a middle position like that, and then all the way back. And that's just gonna change sort of how they suspend the seat. Um, and for different weights of riders, different size riders, that might make a big difference. Now I've only been using them at the furthest back setting so far. And for me personally, the seat's pretty comfortable. It's nice and wide, which is good, and I'm a wide dude, so uh, it fits me nicely. The springs are more than enough. The backrest is tall enough to keep you comfy. Yeah, I have no issues with comfort. And if you are a much shorter person than I am, yes, this seat is also adjustable. So you pull on this little handle here. One second, let me see if I can't get it with just using one hand. I'm gonna put the camera down here for a second, guys. So you pull on the handle and this whole seat slides forward quite a bit too. So again, if you're a much shorter person than me and I'm at about 6'2", you can make sure 
that you can reach all your controls. Now the wheel is fixed. It's a 14 inch steering wheel and I do not have power steering so you definitely want a slightly bigger wheel for that. Uh, and I will discuss why I didn't get power steering and whether or not it's worth it in just a moment. But right now, guys, I got a lot of plowing to do out there. Look at all that snow. So uh, let's go do some snow plowing. Time to start her up. Let me show you guys this process. So very simple. First of all, put your foot on the brake like so. Now, second of all, you want to turn your throttle up a little bit. I usually go about a quarter on the first start. Now here's the tricky part is you want to hold your choke wide open you need two hands for this and then you start her up oh you know what i had my pto engaged you got to make sure that your switch down here is pushed in so that it's not trying to engage your blower or your mower deck right, let's try again started before. I'm going to back up. Alright, once you're in position, all you got to do pull up on your PTO and you're good to go. Okay guys, quick break in the middle of plowing. Well, because I need gas. And it's a good opportunity for me to point something else out. The gas filler cap and the gas tank are back here housed uh, underneath this left fender. Now the gas tank here is 3.3 gallons. And I figure you're looking at about a gallon an hour. So you should get, uh, you know, a decent amount of uh, driveway clears or uh, full lawns out of this thing. Although, Depends how big your lawn is, of course. My lawn's probably a two or three hour cut, so this might be a, a tank per lawn, but that so far remains to be seen. Now, let me tell you about something else I think is really smart. It's a small thing, sure, but you know, small things make a big difference. This gas filler tube, that's a three inch diameter pipe right there. It's uh, a lot bigger than anything you'd find on a side-by-side -side ATV or snowmobile. And uh, again, I just think having a big uh, pipe like that just means it's gonna make it easier to fill. A lot of the times with a tractor like this, you're filling it out of a jerry can, not necessarily at the gas pump. So uh, having just more diameter, is gonna mean less spillage. And let's go ahead and fill her up. everybody driveway is done now let me tell you a couple things about this x350 and first of all i wish it went as fast as what you just saw um, however the speed here top speed five and a half miles per hour which is certainly not bad and out here on the driveway when you're plowing you don't want to go much faster than that um, the snow that's falling today is actually really heavy really wet snow so if you do go too fast you can sort of overrun the snow and not allow the snowblower to do its job so you definitely sort of want to take your time you don't want to speed five and a half miles per hour is more than you're ever really going to use out on the driveway now uh, the power from the Kawasaki was great. Like I said, it was heavy, wet, thick snow, but uh, it really never seemed like the actual engine was struggling at all. So I'll give it credit there as well. And now here's where I want to talk a little bit about sort of our buying decision. So the couple of things that I sort of thought I wanted were four wheel steering and power steering. I kind of went into the dealership thinking those were two important features. I ended up without both of them. Let me tell you why. So first of all, the power steering here, once I felt this unit without power steering, I just didn't think I needed it. The power, or the non-power steering here is so light, is, is really, you can do it with one hand, even out here on the snow. So once I felt it, 
I just didn't see the need for power steering. Now I'm sure if I had the power steering I'd probably love it and it's one of those things usually once you get it it's hard to give it up but uh, you know what I so far don't find myself regretting that decision at all. And then the next choice was four wheel steering and once again I did not get four wheel steer and four wheel steer is more important if you're cutting grass around a lot of trees. If you have a lot of really small uh, circles that you have to make the four wheel steer is nice because it turns basically in its own circle. This thing doesn't have four wheel steering, but it turns incredibly sharp. I've been nothing but impressed with how tight the turning circle is here on the X350. And once again, for the driveway, you don't really need that tight turning circle. The grass will be more important. But once I get out to the end of the driveway, I just fly around in a tight circle and basically you do that U turn and you're right on the next line ready to plow back down. And then once you get in here, I got, you know, trailers and cars. It is nice to have that tight maneuver maneuverability so you can really fit into those small spots. Now the other thing I really noticed I want to talk about are, is the hydrostatic transmission. Um, it, it's really sensitive and I like that. Both of the pedals, you don't have to go you know full pedal, you can just apply a little bit of throttle and the tractor will just nicely move along at that speed and it's not hard on your right foot to sort of keep the pedal down at about a quarter pedal sort of thing. Um, so yeah, it's the, the uh, throttle adjustability and just how delicate you can be with the throttle is also really good. So at the end of the day, guys, I got to tell you that I'm happy with my purchase. Now, what about the prices? Of course, what you're asking. I'm only going to talk to you here in Canadian dollars because that's how I dealt with this X350 uh, out the door of the dealership, including taxes. And that's an important point. We don't talk about taxes too much. Out the door, this thing was just a hair under $9,000. Now, you also have to remember that the snow or the plow, the blower up front, that's an additional cost it comes with those tire chains and with the weights it's all an additional cost so once you add all that up this kit you see right here in front of you including the mower deck nine grand and if I had have gone for the power steering and the four-wheel steering and the bigger Kawasaki engine you could spend even more money nine thousand dollars is already a lot and I didn't really want to push too much further so this is the unit I thought had all the features I needed with nothing I didn't and that's why we ended up with it and so far I'm happy so guys make sure you stay tuned to the channel because I'm gonna own this hopefully for a long long time and I'll have to do regular updates on how it's running and any reliability issues I might have and that's it for this video guys so why don't you go below leave a comment let me know what you think of uh, my new place and my new tractor here and as always hit like hit subscribe and then come right back here to the channel for the latest news views and real-world reviews. See ya.